good news is that um, we're running late, so I'm not going to do the one hour version. <laughs> but you never want to invite a storyteller or historian to talk and then say you only get 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, so mostly what I'm interested in and offered to talk about was why we are holding this event in Gwenda. And that seems to get lost sometimes lately. I love that we've turned this into not just Black History Day over the years, but Multicultural Day. It was a very multicultural, historic experience in this valley. But there's a reason that we hold it here. And people ask me about it back in my booth all the time, so I thought we needed to remind you. Uh, we had a large group. There's always an Adam who comes someplace and gets successful, and then there's people who follow. We had a large group of blacks who settled here in the Cape Valley in the 1890s, and many of them around Gwenda. By the time they got here, most of the land around the town of Gwenda was already grabbed up by the pioneers, so they settled at 12 hundred feet up on what we now call the summit and there were blacks and whites settlers up there. They built a school up there in the 1890s and there, none of our schools were segregated in the whole valley. None of the schools were segregated and in the pictures of all these schools you see all the kids standing together, you know. And growing up here, my experience until I hit high school was there, we all just were all a family. Okay, so then in the 60s, I see the world through the television and realize it's not all like that everywhere. So it was a unique experience. It was very multicultural. I'm not saying there was never any racial discrimination here because there was. But when I grew up here, it was not an issue. And sadly, it's kind of coming back, as we know. So we're fighting that as best we can. But um, when I came back to do the research on my five Scottish gold mining pioneer ancestors who settled here, I got tangled up in the history of everybody else in the valley because it turns out they had a similar experience because many of the people who settled here were gold mining first, came in the 1850s, and settled in this valley because it was this rich bottom lot land on a creek, great land available, whatnot. But then I found out by digging around that the experience coming across the plains was similar for almost everybody who ended up settling here. So I had some questions I wanted to get answered and one of them was, why was it every black person I knew by the time I was in high school lived in Glinda? What was that all about? No, I grew up here, but I didn't know. I grew up down in Cape Hay, and we all went to high school in Esparto. It's the only high school, second oldest high school in Yolo County, Esparto. And in the 1890s, it was the second oldest high school, all the kids, including us out in the Hungry Hollow, north of the town of Cape Hay, all the Cape Hay Valley kids went to the little two-room schoolhouses. We all got bussed down to the high school. And it never occurred to me until I looked around and went, there are no black people living around me. What's that all about? Everybody's up in the window. I made the assumption that that was racial, racial discrimination. It was the 60s. I thought I knew something. I go away, I come back. Well, there was a history here that I didn't know anything about. So, I start asking questions. Everyone says, you need to go talk to Bill Petty. Now, some of you know Bill Petty. He passed away, sadly, last year. Um, Clarence mentioned him. He and Clarence were part of putting this together, looks like 17 years ago now. Um, and we got to be good friends because the first time I met him and told him I was trying to find out about the history of African Americans here in the Cape Bay Valley, he gives me that eagle eye when I tell him who I am. And he said, I once, I once sued one of your, your uncles for discrimination. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> and then he told me who it was, and I went, oh, you yeah, know, okay, I wouldn't be surprised, probably deserved it. Um, but that wasn't my mom, that wasn't my dad, and that's not how I was raised. But, it, you know, it existed. So he then decides, I'm okay. So he starts telling me what he knows. Well, Bill Petty's family came here in the 1940s, 1942, from North Carolina. And he, uh, as he says, talked back to a white man just one too many times, and his dad thought it was time to get out of North Carolina. So they had relatives here in Gwenda, the Hackett family. So they came here then. 
And then he starts taking me back in time, you know. So I thought, well, so there were people here before that that weren't related, and you know, so I needed to go back and do some research. So he starts talking about who we would call the Adam. The first black settler in Yolo County is the one you're always looking for, because as you know, in social anthropology, that's where the patterns go. Someone lands somewhere, becomes successful, other people will follow. So in 1854, a man named Basil Campbell was brought here by John D. Stevens, who started the Bank of Woodland. Stevens family, big local pioneer family, they're still here. My sister married one of them. So I said, Bill, why is his name Campbell? He looks at me in that way that he used to do. It's like, why are you messing me that? I go, well, no, 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 Bill. You and I taught enough American history to know that if he was born to a slave mother, and he's mulatto, like you just told me, he's got a white father, and he was probably a Campbell. And he goes, oh, well, I never really thought about it. And I go, well, he was brought here by Stephen, so now i got to go find out what that's all about, because I'm Campbell. So I thought, all right, so there's a little digging to do. And sure enough, back in Cooper County, Missouri, where a lot of these pioneers came from, Cooper County, Missouri, there were the Stevens family and the Campbell family and some other families, including the Gaithers, Mary Gaither, some of you know who she is. They were all in Cooper County, Missouri. And Basil Campbell was born to James D. Campbell, one of my ancestors, or at least on that farm. They weren't plantations, they were farms. And his wife was a Stevens. When he passed away, and this is all Basil Campbell's narrative in the history book, all about Yolo County, he was sold to her family. One of the sons of the Stevens family brought him to California and said, I basically I'm going to buy you from my family and take you to a free state and you'll have your freedom. I need you to pay me back for what I'm paying to do that. And he brought him to California. So in 1854, Basil Campbell was the first black to settle in Yolo County. Later, his brother followed him, of course. Later, Greenberry Logan followed. Later, Gus, who knew the Jennings family, followed. And Greenberry Logan settled near them originally, and then found his way up here to Glenda. So I thought, all right, this is all starting to, you know, make sense. So the Logan family is the oldest and first black family here in Gwenda, but the other families were somehow related. They made the same path and they ended up here and that's how that happened. So the, we have for the um, archives, Yellow County archive display in the back and the book that I ended up writing after I did all this research is in the back there. Um, to me, what was significant about it and that I wanted to make sure you understood is we are not just celebrating multicultural history and black history, but we've done a lot of research and we have a lot of information on the families here. And if you are interested, we're happy to share that with you. And I want to explain to you that there's a 16-page little booklet that we're selling just for cost. What um, Lon Springer did, I give him credit for this, he pulled together 16 pages of the writing I've done on the history of, of blacks, not just in Yolo County, but especially here in Western Yolo, because I care more about the KB Valley. Um, so all of this is in a little booklet being sold just for you know, cost back there if you'd like. So, pardon me? Three bucks. Yeah. So last time I did this little talk because I wanted to honor Bill Patty because he was passing away. He passed away. Um, Everyone ran back to my booth and grabbed them all up <laughs> as soon as I talked. So Lon went to the trouble and expense to make more of them all in color, made a little booklet out of them. So they're for sale back there if you like. So that's really all I wanted to share. This valley means a lot to me. I'm fifth generation gold mining pioneer, descendant, Cape Hay Valley. You know, I bleed Cape Hay Valley. And I um, love that we have this celebration, and I thank you all for coming here and celebrating it with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Our next.